how to make a universe. This is not an easy thing, so we'll divide it into parts. This is part one. G'day, I'm Ray Tone from New Zealand, and I'm going to talk to you today about how to make a universe. One of the things that people have always wondered about is where did the universe come from and how does it work? The problem is, in modern times, we've got wrapped up in this crazy idea of the Big Bang Theory. And every time something new is discovered, they have to invent a new add-on to it, such as dark matter, or inflation, or dark energy, uh, or acceleration, and various other things going on to try and make it work. This is much more complicated than the epicycles attributed to poor old Ptolemy. This is Ptolemy, who worked out the motion of the planet pretty well. In modern times, he's been criticized for his epicycles, but his system is far better than those used in modern cosmology, where every time something goes wrong, they have to invent a new way to make it work. Democritus was the man who invented atoms. In some ways, they were a good idea, solving the problem of knives cutting up things um, without limit. But in fact, it did also cause a problem of thinking that there really couldn't be anything smaller. In modern times, we keep making smaller things, um, but we can't really have knives for chopping them into those sizes. Although there were some clever thinkers back in Greek times, we also get the origin of all of the problems in thinking about how the universe works from then too. Democritus had this wonderful idea of atoms, but when we get later on to Maxwell, the idea of atoms was so embedded in the thinking that it wasn't possible for people to realize that atoms might actually be a wave structure and nothing to do with subtle little particles. And although later this was discovered to be so, a wrong turning was made at that time and people didn't recognize that matter was just a form of electromagnetism and that it could be explained by the existing laws that were discovered by Maxwell. James Clark Maxwell took all of the equations that people were working out and the ideas on electricity and magnetism and combined them together in one system that showed how an ether could vibrate and explain all the laws of electricity and magnetism and that the result of this would also be to explain the behavior of light and to predict things such as radio waves. A clever man who really got close to the formula for the universe. Maxwell's equations explain the behavior of electricity and magnetism and how these waves can be propagated in an ether. One of the problems was they couldn't work out how matter could fit in with this because the equations of electromagnetism seemed to be saying that the universe was made of this very strong thing of ether with a tensile strength like a million times that of steel in order to propagate waves at the speed of light. But at the same time, the Earth could pass through this ether. The answer was, the Earth didn't pass through the ether in the way that a knife passes through butter. It passes through the ether in the way that sound passes through a block of steel. The stuff that we consider as substantial has to be seen as just waves in the ether, just like the electricity and magnetism waves. Matter is made of these same sort of waves. William Clifford was a brilliant mathematician. He understood from Maxwell's equations that there had to be solutions for matter, and he worked out that matter must be standing waves of electromagnetism. Unfortunately, he died before these ideas caught on, and the idea got lost. Hendrik Lorentz, and also Fitzgerald, understood that if the electron was what held matter together, and it had an electrical basis, then perhaps the equations of Maxwell would explain the changes in size of matter, which would mean there would be a null result in the meikleson morley experiment. This idea didn't carry on because of the way people interpreted relativity, unfortunately. In the late 1800s, physics made a wrong turn because it was discovered that the meikleson morley experiment, which was supposed to show the motion of the Earth through the ether, got a null result. Lorentz and Fitzgerald had some explanations for this because they began to understand at a rudimentary level that matter was actually electromagnetic wave based, or at least electrons were. However, the idea didn't catch on, and instead people interpreted relativity as meaning there was no ether. This was a bad move. 
later on when de Broglie came along and also with Schrodinger before that it began to be understood that matter was actually made of waves and although physics has come to this conclusion now that there is a wave nature to matter they didn't go back and revise the mistakes made at that time when relativity was first invented when the idea of the ether was abandoned by many physicists actually many of the famous physicists always believed in ether I think they understood it but in modern times it's regarded as a bit of a laugh I have made other videos which you may watch about the wave structure of matter but once it's understood that matter is made of real waves that these waves are exactly the same waves that travel as electromagnetism it's just those standing waves they are concentric spheres of standing waves coming outwards and going inwards at each point where there's an atom where there's a particle so particles are standing waves of electromagnetism uh, so they have the basically the same laws of physics operating on them as Maxwell's equations it's just necessary to recognize that near the center of a particle a very strong nonlinearity created by the intense energy does create some extra factors so to summarize although physics has made a lot of advances there's been the occasional wrong turn these wrong turns have meant that that there's some seed of uh, impure thinking that's been retained and that is an obstacle to further progress uh, but what I'm going to show is that if we took a much simpler view just taking Maxwell's equations essentially as they are but recognizing that something extra goes on at the center of particles where the energy is more intense so the speed of light will vary then we get, can arrive at an understanding of how the, the entire universe works just based on the simple principle in part two I will show some real wave structures to show how this sort of thing might go on.